The jump is the second of the two techniques that we teach. The other technique, orchestral speech, was covered in the previous module. As we explained in that module, orchestral speech is essentially a quick fix. It can provide instant fluency and is great for getting you through difficult situations, but in the long term, on its own, it won't reduce your tendency to block. In contrast, the benefits of the jump are more long term. And in particular, if you learn to use the jump properly, it should reduce your tendency to block and reduce the stammering iceberg as well. So you need to have both techniques at your disposal. The jump is essentially a type of block modification technique. To clarify what's meant by this, I'll read a couple of extracts from Van Riper's 1973 textbook entitled The Treatment of Stuttering. Any therapist without half trying can get any stutterer to talk without stuttering. But should he not instead try to teach him how to cope sensibly with the stuttering when it does appear? Or is expected. Stuttering can be temporarily suppressed or repressed by a host of procedures ranging from relaxation, shadowing, hypnosis and operant conditioning to sheer hocus pocus. But unless we modify the learnt behaviours and weaken them our efforts will be largely in vain. So as a block modification technique, the jump is fundamentally different from orchestral speech and from fluency shaping approaches in general, insofar as it is a technique to employ to help you to get out of a block after that block has occurred. In fact, in order to become skilled in using this technique, you need to allow blocks to occur. The more you allow them to occur, the better. In contrast, Orchestral speech is a technique designed to enable you to stop blocks occurring in the first place. A key advantage of the jump is that you don't need to use any technique whatsoever until you find yourself blocking. So unlike orchestral speech, there's no advanced preparation needed. You can just allow yourself to speak completely spontaneously and if you get stuck, that's okay. Indeed, it's good if you get stuck, because that provides an opportunity to practice jumping. The more you block, the more opportunities you have to practice quickly and easily getting out of blocks. So what do you do? Well, the technique is completely simple and straightforward. Carry on until you get stuck, and then when you get stuck, first, abandon the sound that you're trying to say. So just pause briefly. Then continue on from the next sound or word that you can say. A key thing with jumping, therefore, is to abandon trying to join the sound that you're having difficulty with, with whatever sound comes next. Why is it so helpful when you get stuck to abandon trying to join the sounds up? The answer to this question is that it's because most of the difficulty that stammerers encounter is with the process of co-articulation. In other words, with the process of joining the sounds of a word together. So, to get around this difficulty, the jump involves abandoning trying to join the sound that we're having difficulty with to the sounds that come after it. In fact, most commonly, people who stammer experience difficulty joining the first phoneme or sound of a word with whatever comes next. So with my name Paul, the most common, uh, the most likely difficulty would be in joining the initial P with the vowel or. It would be much less common to experience difficulty later on in that word. So using the jump, if I experience difficulty with the P, I abandon it, pause briefly, and then say the rest of the word in isolation, all. So, for example, if I was to say my name is Paul, and I was to have some difficulty on that initial P and use the jump, it would probably sound something like this. My name is all. 
to use the jump, start to speak completely spontaneously without employing any technique whatsoever. Then, when you get stuck on a sound, immediately stop and give up on that sound. Then, after a short pause, carry on from the next sound. The main difference between this and other block modification approaches is that with the jump you always keep moving forward. You don't go back to have another go at the sounds that you got stuck on. Instead you simply give up on those sounds and you carry on with the remaining sounds or words. As a result you say as much as possible of what you can say rather than worrying about the bits you can't say. Of course, sometimes the words you jump on will end up sounding a bit too disjointed and the listener will fail to recognise them. Should this happen, then carry on regardless to the end of the phrase you intend to say, because often, a bit further on, the listener will be able to guess what you intended from the context. If, however, after you get to the end, it still looks like the listener hasn't understood, then it's okay to go back and say the phrase again. But when you do go back, make sure you repeat the entire phrase, not just the problem, sound or word. On the occasions when you have to repeat the phrase again, second time round, put a little less effort into saying it. This might seem counterintuitive, but it helps prevent you from falling into the trap of trying too hard. And in any case, second time round, the listener is far more likely to understand you because he will have already heard most of the words, so he can focus his attention on the ones he missed the first time round. Although most problems occur at the beginning of words, this isn't always the case, especially if the words contain several syllables. Ultimately, wherever you experience difficulty in a word, the same principle applies. When using the block, stop trying to say the sound that you're stuck on, jump over it and carry on from the next sound. In reality, you're highly unlikely to get stuck on more than one or two bits of a word, so you're unlikely to ever need to jump more than twice in a word. But whatever the case, try not to go back. Try to keep moving forward. Most often, if you just jump over the sound that you're having difficulty with, you'll find that that's sufficient to get you started again. Sometimes, however, you may find that you have difficulty saying the next sound as well. If this happens, jump to the next word, and if necessary, keep jumping until you can get started again. Keep jumping even if it means missing out more than one word and even if it means that you don't say enough to enable your listener to understand you. The key is always to keep moving forward until you get to the end of the phrase you originally planned. When you do get to the end of the planned phrase, if you find that you've missed too much of it and the listener hasn't understood, you can always go back and say the entire phrase again. And if you do need to go back and say a phrase again, this time, to ensure that you're able to say as much as possible, try saying the phrase using orchestral speech instead of the jump. Unlike other block modification techniques, the jump involves giving up on the sounds that you find yourself getting stuck on. This may sound like a form of avoidance. However, in reality, it's quite the opposite. In fact, in order to practice the jump correctly, it's important not to allow the anticipation of upcoming difficulty on a word to influence how you speak or what you try to say. On the contrary, as far as possible, you should simply allow anticipated blocks to happen. So really, the jump strongly promotes non-avoidance of blocks. All the same, as we've mentioned previously, we don't advocate continuing to try to say a sound once you find yourself blocking on it. By jumping forwards to the remaining sounds rather than sticking on the one that you're currently having difficulty with, the jump ensures that the psychological impact of a block is significantly less than it otherwise would be. This strategy 
helps greatly to reduce the fear of getting stuck on the same sounds or words in the future. In reality, when practicing the jump, you probably will find that you do continue to occasionally repeat or prolong sounds that you are having difficulty moving on from. The habit of doing so is often so deeply ingrained that it happens before you realize what you're doing. If some repetitions and prolongations continue to happen in this way, it's fine, it's not a problem. But as soon as you realize that you're repeating or prolonging in this way, stop and jump to the next sound. As far as possible, it's always best to use the jump as your primary technique to get you through blocks. However, if, after using the jump, you find that the listener hasn't understood what you've said, it may sometimes be better to then resort to using orchestral speech to repeat the phrase again, especially if you find yourself in a situation where there's quite a lot of time pressure. In such situations, orchestral speech will enable you to get the words out more fluently, so it tends to be easier for the listeners to understand. If you repeat the phrase over again using orchestral speech, try to stick as far as possible to exactly the same words that you said first time round, as this will save you from having to waste time reformulating what you want to say.